Tonight on Q2, Billings is bursting and a new high school is needed. A look at how parents are supporting the idea. We feel like this would solve a problem of the overcrowding. Plus, back to reality after a travel nightmare. Almost lost all five of these uh, drive-in semi-trucks play bumper cars. Interstate 90 shut down for nearly 24 hours. We'll take a look at the last time it happened. And a New York man touches down in Billings, but there's a problem. There's no kangaroo here. Montana, not his preferred destination. We'll tell you what happened. The MTN News starts right now. From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 10 o'clock news. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Andrea Lutz. And I'm Russ Riesinger. Tonight, I'll look at how the growth of Billings could impact the future landscape of Billings High Schools. A newly formed parent group is asking if Billings should go from three to four, pitching the idea of a brand new high school on the southwest side of town, an area seeing a massive boom in housing. As our David Jay reports, it's a move that many parents would welcome. Parents in West Billings and South of Billings are looking into the possibility of building a new high school. This would include students from Blue Creek, Elysian, Canyon Creek, and Elder Grove. And this week, a survey was just completed to gauge the interest among parents. You've seen the growth and development on Billings Far West End with new homes and new businesses nearly every week. We're seeing growth on the outside in our high school district. But with that growth comes growing pains. We all know that School District 2 is overcrowded right now. Um, and that that presents challenges. Students who live in this area west of the city limits currently attend West High School or Senior High School. West has more than 2,200 students, and Billings' other public high school, Skyview, is number three. We're managing it through the balancing of our enrollments. Superintendent Greg Upham says School District 2 is not considering a new high school. Instead, the district hopes to alleviate overcrowding through redistricting. And some say that may not be enough. We feel like this would solve a problem of the overcrowding. Susie Layton, a former School District 2 board trustee, is co-founder of the nonprofit Southwest Billing Smart Growth, which surveyed more than 500 families about a new high school. Early results show 95% say there is a need for a high school and support the idea. 86% say they would support a bond, and 80% support consolidating the four existing school districts in the area, Blue Creek, Elysian, Canyon Creek, and Elder Grove, something that would have to happen. According to the law right now, we do have to consolidate to make it possible to create a high school district. Moving them to some of the bigger schools, they don't get the same opportunities that we always have out here. So it would be nice to have that as well. It's a great idea, especially as the community grows. I think it would benefit everybody out here. I think it would just be a good idea to have a middle school, uh, high school here. But the process won't be easy. All four independent school boards would need to support the plan, and so would voters. And ultimately, an expensive bond would have to be passed. It will be a really positive response to the information that we've gathered. In Billings, David J. MTN News. Montana law is already in place, allowing elementary school districts to the ability to expand into high schools. You may remember we saw it here in Billings the last time was Lockwood when they built a high school. Senate Bill 139 back in 2017 was signed into law by then Governor Steve Bullock, letting districts with more than a thousand students expand into a K through 12 district if voters agree to pay for the bond. Since 2000, Lockwood has had the largest growth rate in the state of Montana. Well, traffic is moving tonight after roughly 24 hours of a standstill on Interstate 90. And it's a huge relief because every hotel and motel within miles of Big Timber was full, doubling the town in size. Our Charlie Kleps saw the chaos complete with a police escort to the town's Super 8 motel. I-90 was closed Tuesday afternoon, putting an abrupt halt to people's travel plans. And in the small community of Big Timber, the dangerous roads have kept truckers and travelers stranded for days. I got here and got the last room that night, and then I stayed also yesterday. At this point, traveling nurse Jessica Lee could work for the Big Timber Visitors Bureau. After her two-day trip turned into a week-long nightmare that included two near crashes. At the end of the day, you can always have another job or make the money back, but you can't get yourself and your pets back. So she's been hunkered down at the Super 8, and she certainly isn't alone. We thought it'd be a really nice mother-daughter road trip. Anna Weatherspoon was traveling to Washington State with her daughter before sliding off the road near Butte and getting rear-ended. Not an ideal, but you know, we're safe. The people here are extraordinary. 
um, I guess it's a little town effect. The 1,700 person town has done all it can to provide meals and shelter, even in some unlikely places. They turn their fireplace on and they let people sleep out here in the dining room and even like the laundry room and in the hallways just to get them out of the cold. And then there's the truckers, hundreds of them. Pat Cleland and Ryan Morellis are headed just north of Three Forks, but they were too light to keep going. We're both empty, and when you get wind and ice, it don't work very good when you're empty. This is part of trucking. There's no use for getting upset or mad about it. You know, it is what it is. It's the weather. Nearly 200 more truckers were waiting in Columbus for the OK, which finally came about 2 p.m. Wednesday afternoon. And everyone here is hoping for a smooth ride the rest of the way. You know, that's all you can do is just sit tight and just keep a good attitude. In Big Timber, Charlie Klepps, MTN News. Well, the kindness of Big Timber was on big time display last night when the interstate shut down. I spoke with the owners of the Big Timber Bakery who opened up their cafe to serve those looking for a warm meal. Owner Teb Seifu says the bakery was packed, firing up their pizza oven too. And take a look at this video he sent me, even taking it upon themselves to hand out that hot pizza to our first responders guarding the interstate exits. But perhaps what's most compelling from his late night video, these images of semi trucks just lined up everywhere that they could manage to find a place to park. It is something that Seifu says he has never seen. We're normally a bakery. We, we open uh, early in the morning. I was here at uh, five. 30 in the morning, we were uh, baking fresh pastries for the day. And, uh, you know, I, I, got, I got off and I said, you know what? Why not go back, open our doors, um, throw it out to local uh, hotels and whatnot. And, uh, and, you know, see if we can't be a, a help. And everybody that's come in has been very wonderful. Just thankful to, that we did open. Teb also tells me that in the 10 years they've been in Big Timber doing what they do, they've never seen the interstate being closed down, going eastbound and westbound at the same time. He described the town as a population that tripled in size when officials closed it. I had to put the groundhog hat on because tomorrow, Groundhog Day, and we find out if we're going to get six more weeks of winter or just goofy headgear. So we thought we'd take a look back at January because really that didn't feel very much like winter. We had generally above average temperatures until we got to the very end of the month where the reading started to drop. The coldest reading for Billings was at minus 11, but the warmest reading happened towards the middle of the month. As far as precipitation goes, we also held in there. We had about a half inch of total precipitation, uh, and then snowfall was a little bit less than what we would normally see, uh, what, almost five and a half inches. That's not so bad. But we are looking at temperatures starting to warm up getting into next week. We'll talk about it in a few minutes. Well, the length of this closure is unprecedented for any stretch of highway in Montana, let alone its main interstate highway. Yeah, according to the National Weather Service, the last time this stretch of I-90 was closed was 2016. It happened twice actually that year, first on December 18th, then again on New Year's Day, shutting down the stretch from Columbus to Livingston for about five hours. Well, yesterday, dozens of crashes were reported before the shutdown, including an overtank tanker carrying asphalt oil. Park County Sheriff said a lot goes into making the decision, and it's a group effort among agencies, but once the road started to look like an ice rink, there was little choice left. That snow and that blowing wind essentially turns the roadway into a sheet of glass almost. Um, so the roads become so icy um, that you can't, you can't even hard, you can barely walk on it, let alone drive on it. And there is still a warning tonight from Sheriff Bickler. He says even though the road is back open, travel remains dangerous and it's not recommended. The Montana House has given initial approval to a package of budget and tax bills, including several tax policies endorsed by Governor Greg Gianforte. Five of the six bills passed almost entirely on party lines with Republicans in favor. Those bills would use hundreds of millions of dollars from the state budget surplus to fund income tax and property tax rebates and pay off state debt. They'd also exempt more businesses from the business equipment tax, revise capital gains tax rates, and set money aside to secure matching federal highway funding. Lawmakers included language in each bill shrinking the expenditures unless all six are approved. Republicans said that was a way to make sure no Montanans were left out from receiving the benefits. The Democrats said the policies should be considered separately and the majority is moving too fast. 
The House is expected to take a final vote on the bills tomorrow. Keeping Montana's Constitution just as it is, that's the mission of the We the People rally. MTN's Tom Buchanan takes us to the Rotunda, where about 200 people showed up to protest changes to our Constitution. A We the People rally took place at the Capitol on Wednesday afternoon. The event was organized by the Northern Plains Resource Council and featured such speakers as former Governor of Montana, Mark Roscoe, and former legislator, Dorothy Bradley. An estimated 200 people showed up to support the rally. Change in the Constitution is warranted once in a while, but not wholesale. The event was co-sponsored by various organizations such as Forward Montana, ACLU Montana, and Friends of the Montana Constitution. Montana's current and second constitution was adopted in 1973. Over that time, there have been 34 amendments made to the document. Currently, there have been 56 requests for possible amendments during this legislative session alone, and one bill introduced. Those rallying felt that there are too many requests for possible amendments being brought forward and want to help maintain the current protections and rights of the Montana Constitution. We really want the Constitution kept as it is, as a whole. We appreciate every part of the Constitution, and people of Montana don't probably even understand how many rights they have that they enjoy that are under threat with these amendments. Freistat says that some of her biggest concerns over the amendments deal with the judiciary and the environment. In Montana, voters ultimately have the final say on all proposed constitutional amendments, with any proposed amendment appearing on the ballot during the next general election. Reporting in Helena, Tom Buchanan, MTN News. Still ahead on the MTN 10 o'clock news on Q2, a New York man's trip to Australia takes a more than 8,000 mile detour right here to Billings. Some might be angry, but not him. He's got his story coming up next. And in sports, born to be a champion from volleyball to swimming to wrestling, our Athlete of the Week has made the podium her home. We'll hear from her in just a bit. The MTN 10 o'clock news continues right after this.